She had always advised him not to bolt the door, but his disregard for her counsel had become a daily occurrence. And thus, she struggled to manage the little boy full of unending vitality. The petite mother felt inferior, imploring her child to unbolt the door. She wondered why he'd begun to rebel so much in recent weeks. She felt she was beginning to lose her grip over him. Keep watching to unveil what happens next. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more stories. Maria Jude was an affectionate yet overcautious parent. From the time her son Kyle turned four, she had been overly aware of his welfare, constantly on the lookout for any alarming signals or peculiar conduct. Hence, when Kyle returned from his weekend visit to his grandmother's place in Redbush, California, and started spending extended periods locked in the restroom, Maria's parental senses went into overdrive. Maria Jude, a lady of 40 years, was inherently an anxious mother. Any minor tweak or shift in her four-year-old son, Kyle's behavior, struck her senses vehemently, even though he was a little more delicate than other boys of his age. When he returned from his grandmother's place one weekend and began holding up in the restroom for long stretches, her concern was palpable. At first, she dismissed it as a growing up phase, but as days passed and Kyle's restroom hideouts lengthened, her worry turned into a persistent unease. In the beginning, Maria tried to reason with Kyle's conduct. Maybe he was delighting in his newfound autonomy, discovering the secrets of the restroom in his way. There's an age-old saying, boys will be boys. However, as time passed and Kyle's restroom sessions continued, Maria's fear intensified. She felt as though she was failing to notice an integral part of her son's development. Every time Maria approached the restroom door, she could hear the incessant sound of water pouring from the faucet, sometimes lasting for hours on end. It would even occur right before she would pick him up from her mother-in-law's place. Whenever she lightly knocked on the door, she would ask about Kyle's welfare, only to be greeted by muffled answers and crying requests for solitude. It seemed as if he was concealing something, a secret he didn't want her to discover. Maria Jude strode back and forth in front of the restroom door, anxiety making her heart beat faster. Kyle had been inside the restroom for over an hour now, and the sound of the running water had not stopped. This behavior had manifested several times since his return from his grandmother's home, but this was the longest he had kept himself shut inside. What must he be up to in there? By the time Monday had rolled around and the afternoon sun was high, Kyle had sequestered himself in the restroom for an unusually long time. Maria couldn't suppress her mounting concern anymore. Hesitantly, she tapped the door of the bathroom, her heart thudding erratically in her chest. Kyle, darling, are you doing all right in there? She asked, a note of apprehension in her tone. After that, she was met with a quiet pause, interrupted only by the hum of flowing water. Following this brief silence, Kyle's stifled voice reached her ears, hinting at worry. I'm preoccupied, Mommy. I'd rather you didn't come in, he muttered his statement barely discernible above the continuous rush of water. Maria's gut twisted with a sense of discomfort. What could be keeping Kyle in the restroom for such an extended period? Intrigued and worried, she pressed her ear against the door, trying to pick up any telltale sounds that might shed light on the situation inside. The only thing that reached her, however, was the incessant noise of persistent water flow. Time dragged on, and Maria found herself restlessly pacing the bathroom's external perimeter, a myriad of worst-case scenarios playing out in her head. What if Kyle was injured or ill or facing an even graver circumstance? Finally, when it got unbearable and she could no longer curb her apprehension, Maria tapped on the door insistently. Her voice wavered with trepidation as she begged, Kyle, dear, I implore you to let me in. I am genuinely distressed for you feeling her heart twist at the imagined sight of her child in a state of despair. There was only an echo of relentless water falling on the other side. No response from her son. She felt a wave of despair washing over her and struggled to grab the doorknob, her fingers trembling uncontrollably. An unsettling thought crossed her mind. Was Kyle all right? She made a move to open the door, but halted when she caught a hint of Kyle's voice, fear-ridden and tiny. No, Mommy, I beg you not to enter. It's not appropriate for you to see me in this state, he exclaimed, his statement encumbered by sobs. Maria could do nothing but stand, paralyzed by shock and a sense of foreboding. 
Her heart echoed with the echo of her son's anguish. It was apparent that whatever was going on inside that bathroom was causing Kyle a great deal of distress. However, Maria found herself powerless to assist him, having no knowledge of what was causing this. Throughout the day, Maria stayed by the bathroom door, plunged helplessly into her thoughts as she overheard Kyle's stifled weeps permeating the door. She wished she could console him and alleviate his pain, but had no clue as to how she could help. As the hours ticked by, weariness finally took over her, and Maria found herself dozing off against the rigid door, her subconscious mind troubled by the sound of running water and the sound of her child's distraught sobs. When dawn broke, Maria was engulfed by an undeniable, deep-rooted sense of anxiety. She couldn't ignore the lingering disquiet that hung over her like a heavy cloud. After an uncomfortable night sprawling on the floor, waking up with a stiff neck did not help matters. She noticed that Kyle's sleeping quarters were untouched. Rubbing the slumber from her eyes, the events of the prior evening started to dawn on her. She gently pushed the bathroom entrance open, only to find her son stationed there from before. Upon awakening, Maria discovered the open bathroom door. With Kyle peering into the mirror, his eyes reddened and puffy from shedding tears. A wave of anxiety washed over Maria, with a sharp maternal instinct compelling her to act. Regardless of Kyle's objections, she rotated the handle and penetrated the room, gasping at the sight that unfolded. Kyle was positioned on the brink of the sink, his focus unblinkingly trained on his mirror image. He was whispering to himself, his small voice resolute and sure. Maria's surprise was gradually replaced by bewilderment as she strained to decipher his murmurs. I am a big boy who can handle things independently, stated Kyle, his identical twin in the mirror, staring back with unwavering courage. Maria tried to decipher the event unfolding before her. Was her son engrossed in dialogue with himself, or was it part of a peculiar ceremony? For a split second, her thought process ventured towards the mystical, her mind conjuring a myriad of otherworldly speculations. However, an insight dawned upon her when she remembered Kyle's grandmother, Laura, who was an enthusiast of inspirational healing. It hit her like a ray of sunlight piercing through threatening clouds that Laura must have taught these mantras to Kyle, spinning them as a tool for uplifting his confidence and self-belief. On the contrary, Maria found herself unable to shake off the discomfort hanging in the room. Kyle, darling, what's happening? Inquired Maria finally, her tone soft but laced with unease. A combination of pride and concern swelled in Maria's heart. She admired Kyle's willpower and fortitude to face whatever hurdles life threw his way. At the same time, she was troubled about what might be plaguing him deep within, prompting him to resort to quiet affirmations in front of a mirror. Once Kyle descended from the sink edge, Maria pulled him into a comforting cuddle, her thoughts shrouded with doubt and puzzlement. What was distressing her small boy inside? Was he keeping something from her? That night, as Maria was putting Kyle to sleep, his eyes shone with a pure inquisitiveness as he looked up at her. Do you think I'm courageous, Mommy? A feeling of a knot tightened in Maria's throat as she looked at her child, whose defenselessness was visible to her. Suppressing her emerging dread, Maria replied tenderly, Absolutely, sweetness. You are the most courageous kid I know. However, once she turned off the light by his bed and quietly exited his room, Maria couldn't stop her thoughts from racing. What fueled her son Kyle's quiet declarations and solitary deliberations before his reflection? What was he so urgently trying to assure himself of? Would she, his mother, ever truly comprehend his silent battles? He was a sensitive boy, prone to tearfulness, and she did not want to distress him. Maria awoke the subsequent morning hoping the previous day had been nothing more than a troubled dream, but it felt more like a persistent bad dream. Kyle had once again barricaded himself in the restroom. Timidly, Maria called to him, her voice laced with worry. Sweetie, are you okay? There was no response from behind the door, just the consistent drone of the running water. Maria's apprehension escalated. She reached for the door to knock but paused. Something seemed off. Instead, she pressed her ear to the door, hoping to discern what her son could be doing in there. After several tentative minutes of listening to his voice, she gathered enough nerve to lightly tap on the door. 
Honey, can I come in? After a short silence, she heard a stifled sob. No, Mom, Kyle's small voice echoed from beyond the door. I'm busy. Please don't come in. It was clear he had been crying. Maria's heart tightened at the sound of Kyle's whimpers. Are you sure you're okay, darling? Do you want Mom to help? But his answer remained staunch. No, Mom. I'm fine. Please leave. Her worry for Kyle compounded. What could he be doing that would warrant such an extended timeline? She pondered whether to respect his space or step in, but her nurturing instincts prevailed. She couldn't shake off the feeling that something was askew. Maria decisively grasped the doorknob, intending to unveil whatever concerted him. As the door swung open, the scene she encountered left her in silence. Kyle was balanced atop the bathroom sink, his small form reflected in the glass, whispering to himself. She picked him up and set him on the floor. What are you doing, Kyle? Maria uttered, her voice oscillating between shock and bewilderment. Startled, he stumbled slightly before turning to his mother, his eyes wide with guilt. Mom, I was just... Maria's thoughts became a whirlwind of emotions. Initially, she held a belief that the unfathomable was involved. Yet as she paid keen attention to Kyle's utterings, she discerned he was saying self-encouraging affirmations. Taken aback, Kyle swung around to confront his mother's gaze, alarm dancing in his eyes. I... I'm just conversing with myself, Mommy. Grandma Laura shared that it aids in my courage, he revealed. I'm a grown youngster who manages tasks independently, Kyle asserted, his tone shaky. He added, Grandma Laura guided me to this. Hearing this, Maria's heart plummeted. Laura, her mother-in-law, always seemed to belittle Maria's position as a parent. Could she be the instigator? Determined to resolve this mystery, Maria decided to play detective. She understood that challenging Laura outrightly would only result in denial, so she contrived a stratagem, installing a clandestine camera in the bathroom and waiting impatiently to unveil the concealed reality. Days unfolded, and the gnawing unease in Maria's psyche persisted. Finally, she mustered up the valor to scrutinize the recorded evidence, her heartbeat escalating. What exactly was her mother-in-law instilling in her son? The footage she watched left her incensed. The recording displayed Laura instructing Kyle with phrases such as, My mom isn't always accurate, and I possess better judgment than mommy. Anger and a feeling of deceit coursed through Maria's veins. The face-off with Laura had now become inevitable. With unyielding resolve, Maria hurried over to her mother-in-law's residence, her thoughts a whirlwind of emotions and conjectures. The incensed mother was en route to confront her mother-in-law. You possess some audacity, Maria voiced furiously as stormed Laura's living space. The evidence of her deception flaming with indignation within. A look of professed innocence appeared on Laura's face. Already having a dreadful gut feeling, Maria analyzed the puzzle. Laura had always been known to belittle Maria's role as a parent. Could she be at fault? The enraged mother confronted her mother-in-law. Quit feigning ignorance, Maria retorted, brandishing the incriminating evidence. You've deliberately misled my son against me, filling his mind with falsities and deceit. Laura's pretense crumbled, replaced by an expression of guilt and remorse. I merely wish the best for Kyle, she stuttered, regret looming in her tone. I didn't intend any detriment. Maria, however, had had enough of the excuses. You've overstepped a boundary, Laura, she stated, her voice shaking with fury. She added, from now onwards, Kyle won't visit you unsupervised. You won't wield power over him anymore. Maria's declaration echoed within the confines of Laura's living quarters as she abruptly exited, resulting in a string of violated faith and splintered friendships. Could it truly be the finale of their convoluted bond? In the course of her homeward journey, Maria was flooded with a rush of melancholy and treachery. The female figure she once held dear as kin had let her down in the crudest manner imaginable. What would be her way of divulging this to her spouse? Yet amidst the agony and misery, Maria drew comfort from the steadfast affection and fidelity of her offspring, Kyle. In unison, they pledged to weather upcoming predicaments, fortified and amalgamated as never before. What do you think about today's story? What would you do if you were in this mother's shoes? Drop your thoughts in the comments section below 
And don't forget to hit the notification bell for more stories. Until the next time.